Oh, hang up everybody. Nice to see you again. How's things? Um, first, uh, thanks very much for the comments on the Ripon journey. That was great. That was nice. Thank you. It was well, just a run out. Um, the fusion is um, about the same. Um, but uh, in a couple of days we're off down to Leesden, so... <laughs> so much. So I don't take any notice. Um, so that, see if that makes any difference. Right then, Peugeot 3008. Anybody got one? Because my daughter has. Um, if I, frankly, if I'd have gone with it, I wouldn't let her buy it. But that's just me. Um, because, as usual, yeah, oil from the turbo. We've seen that before, haven't we? Right. Well, this is the 1.6. Okay, the 1.6 is are notorious for burning out turbos, so I'm not at all surprised to see that. One other thing which does surprise me is, guess what's missing? Yes, the air intake for the blooming air filter. What's that all about? That's not here. That's not here at all. That was completely missing. What's that missing? What's that about? Plus, this scuttle had been taken off and not put back properly. I fixed it now. I put it back properly, but it was out of place. So clearly something's been done, it's been taken out and not been put back properly. Goodness knows, goodness knows what. Perhaps we've got time being built. Who knows? Anyway, um, yeah, so 1.6 is notorious for all the turbos. Now 1.4s actually reported to be fairly good. I know I've had trouble, but it not, might not necessarily have been the turbos at fault. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right, anyway, so. Yeah, big. Big and chunky. You got doors and windows and things and switches and lots of other things and some stuff up there and look at the moving console <coughs> when you get in <laughs> what the truth somebody bang your elbow on and unfortunately they've gone to the electric handbrake and we know how good those are aren't we right so yeah it's even got dials and things um, that con doesn't work naturally. Um, right, anyway, this isn't, the, this isn't why we're here. We're, not, we're here to do a review. Um, <laughs> fortunately, brakes are too, brake pedal's too low, clutch pedal's too high. So that's not something else. Anyway, um, what we're here for, what we are here for, is the rear seat belts don't work. The rear seat belt buckles. I suspect whoever's had it before has had two child seats in, they've never been used and they simply don't work. You can't put your thing. I'll show you. Sorry, one bit of seat but receive, one seat but buckle. Nothing. Look solid. There's a little thingy down there and it doesn't seem to be doing well. I've tried WD-40. That's pretty solid, isn't it? So what we're here for the other side just the same. Little one works. That one's good. Way. Nothing. Uh, so, how do we get these buckles out? So I thought you pull the back seats up. No, I don't believe you do because. Notice when you fold the top seat down, that folds away. I believe the mounting bolts are probably in the back of here. So I need to pull this panel out. But when you look underneath, oh, that turns my knees. Uh, well, you can't see too far, you know. Look like hinges there, but apparently. Now I can't find any information on this. Ah, ha. Right, okay. Maybe that's a secret. Um, 
Did it pull out and pull it out. Oh, where did that one come off? Anyway, we'll come back to that. So that just that one, that one, we'll unfasten that one. So I wonder if it'll just come out while we're just fastening at the back. I don't know. God, we need to change these buckles. So. Yeah. That's a little bit of self destruction, isn't it? Right. Ah, tedious, eh? Other notable features are including a couple of eyes in the mouth, um, net to, nets to put the maps in. Um, there's little cubby holes under the, under the floors, look. It's going the same way as Renault Megane, to be honest. There's a lot of Renault Megane features here. There is one thing that's really cool, I like considerably. That goes up there like that. And then that goes down there like that. That goes. And then you can pretend to be a ranger over on there. And you can park your bum. Okay, so if you can't find a Range Rover, get one of these and get a tail here that falls down. I have to admit, I quite like that. I prefer a Range Rover, but I quite, I quite like that. I can't afford a Range Rover. Um, anyway, that's, that's cool, isn't it? Uh, no? Oh, okay, never mind. Right. This comes out as well. Looks like that. And there's a huge space underneath. Secret research. Let's see around there, so I'm without that pops off. Right, we'll have to have a look at that. Oh god. Let me tip down there. Alright. That's alright, I mean cesspit, isn't it? Um okay then. Put my little seat down. Oh, what have you got back here? So we think that one fastens. Right, I'm going to have a look at this. Maybe some sort of weird clip. There's always a weird clip somewhere. I'm going to have to put you down so I can use both fingers. I've only got two. Right, first success. Got that off. Put a screwdriver behind it and prized it out. As you can see, got those lugs. Hang on a minute. That's better. Those lugs go into there. I just prized them out. Okay. So we'll do the same at the other side. So that should pop out. There we go. Look. Right. That's that out. Have a look. What have we got left? Right, we've got to put down there. Sing. Oh, that's good. It belongs to the rest of the floor. Oh, well, never mind eh? If we can get to the bolts for the seat belts, I'll be happy. Wow, that looks really, that looks really manky. There's that. I'm glad you haven't shovel that out. Well, if somebody's tried before and given up. The thing here is, seat belt buckles like that as an automatic fail, isn't it? If they don't work. Just down there, look. Uh -huh. Oh dear, oh dear. That doesn't look good at all. There's a clue there, look, the blooming top's already off. Uh, 
Oh, damn it. Oh, it's an electric cable going to it. I mean, it's a sensor on it. So, straightforward replacement mode, but best thing to do is get a proper pressure on Uh, I'm going to put these bolts out. Start with the other side. Right. Oh, that's not very tight. Ten milli bolts of these. They weren't very tight either. I've got a feeling someone's had to go at this before and given up. Wish we'd have to go through MO2, didn't we? Oh, look at that one. Woo! Aha! Uh -huh. Now, obviously, they're connected because the bottom one. Oh, God, what a mess. I'll have to get some. <laughs> Biohazard! Both. Back and square back connected, so now I've taken those two bolts out, it lifts right up, which could be really, really good. It could be really, really bad. There's the there's one. I'll have to move some of this stuff because it's moving crap all. So I'll go fetch a biohazard unit. Oh, that'll be for fuel pump. Now yeah, we'll come back to that. Just see, it's getting more and more like a Renault McGann. It really is. Right, I'm going, to <laughs> I'm going to go fetch a JCB and clean some of this out. Now this is the reason I don't like kids eating my cars. Because this is pretty disgraceful. So I'm going to give this a clean up, but it's looking good. We might be able to get to that one. And we should be able to get to that one. So, but it's looking like we're going to need Peugeot parts due to the wires on the sensors for the seatbelt uh, warning system. Um, anyway, I'm going to get this cleaned up, and then we'll carry on having a look. Whew, right, okay, I've taken off my biohazard suit, uh, mask, mask, uh, scarf, and uh, um, everything else you need, and that was just for a trip to the supermarket. I've done the same here. Oh, Fred is here now. What's up, bro? Oh, God. Anyway, tease up, so you can't say further than that, can you? <laughs> Great, tease up. Right, so here we are, this is what we're looking at. So the thing at the back, yeah, it's complete blind, you don't have to take it off well at the moment, but what I'm seeing doesn't please me. I've got an awful feeling that this has been riveted. See the wires for the uh, connectivity. So, there's a warning system on Peugeot that tells you when your seat belts aren't fastened. And this one looks like it's riveted. So the and it's pretty manky as well. It's an O10, so it's only 10 year old. That bit of corrosion around here. It's going to be riveted, isn't it? No, there's no, there's no threads or anything. It's a blasted rivet. And the other side, so look at this. Yeah, not good. Right, so, so to recap, what I've done so far is take out the two bolts, fasten here, both sides. The seats have popped up because they're connected to the rear seat backs. And here we are, so it is feasible now to get to the connections, but just straightforward nut and bolt would have been too simple, wouldn't it? So we've got the other side. Yeah. Now look. That's a rivet as well. Oh, just see. I don't know, we can drill them out, but 
Muszą być do minki. Z kim jebiego dziobym jest to... Cię za łom. Kto to straight forward nam bał? Mój kumie działa, że to jest tutaj. Teraz muszę być drilled out. No bolt replaced. And then hopefully we connect in somewhere where you can. We have to get proper Persian items by the look of it. Yeah, just any old seat belt buckle's not going to work. Oh boy. So that's not today's job then. Persia, well done, you've stuffed me again. You blow me in tight. Well, you, can't, you can't see this, the sun's in your eye. Right. Um. Okay. Ah, goodness sake. Talk about making an easy job simple. Straightforward, nothing bought would have been great, wouldn't it? Right, um, what I think the best thing to do is get some on order, then we'll drill it out and replace it. But at the moment, the simplest way to get to the rear seat belt buckles on a Peugeot 3008 is simply pop the back, back squabs up and you can get to them. Should be able to get them with a the drill there. Uh, right, um, okay, so I'm going to put this back. Um, What a bummer. And it's, oh yeah, some, yeah, something else, look. I said before, it was turning into a, per, into a Renault Megane. That's the fuel pump down there. Exactly the same place on the Renault Megane, under the blooming back seats. Uh, I'll show you something now. This is a fuel pump from a Renault Megane. Scenic. Okay, she got a scenic a while ago. It's before your time, you wouldn't have seen it. Um, bit of a heap, uh, bit about 600 quid for it. But actually, it was quite nice. Nice to drive, it was, steering was light, controls were light. Um, electric handbrake, which eventually failed, twice. Um, but it was quite, quite a pleasant drive, I must admit. It was a bag, a bag of shite, but bag, it was a bag of rubbish, sorry. But the main thing was, this is the fuel pump went. You know that because it didn't start one day and you think, well, so we found that if you slammed the back doors, it would start. And it's simply because he jolted the pump enough to, um, for, for, it to, for it to work. So clever me thought, oh, let's just spray the terminals with some WD-40. And that worked for a while. What's the It seemed quite good. Until one day it broke down again on the side of the motorway in the M62, putting my daughter in considerable danger. Uh, which I'm not pleased about, but the worst thing was when we saw this the connection had burnt clean through the plastic and was now out. You had an electrical connection over a bomb. Well done, me, I created a bomb. I want to be able to say that on YouTube, but it's a BOMB. Not, not intentionally, by accident. So I'm saying if you've got a Renault again or a Peugeot your scenic and your fuel pump starts kicking up, don't bother fanning about, get straight out there, get a new one, get it in. Don't be trying to do any shortcuts like I did. Okay? That's what, the, that's what the Renaults look like. Get a new one in, straight away. And then you might save somebody's life. Okay? Now that frightened me to that. I'm just telling you that as a public information announcement. Okay, that's today's public information film over with. Um, I'm going to put this back, I can't do anything now, we're going to have to I'll some proper parts from a, a Puri Jot shop and then we'll have to drill these out and pop some new ones in with the nut and bolt. <sighs> well, yeah, honestly. Anyway, it's French, you see. You get some spare rivets with that. Where are we going to put the rivets? I know, I should put, in, I put the spare ones in the back seat of this 2008. Aha. Marvellous, well done lads, you've just stopped the job. Right, okay, and um, that was going to do for now. I'm going to put this back and go get, I'm going to go drink my tea because Feeds just bought some out. Um, at least I've heard one is clean the seat out underneath.
with a shovel and the JCB and a biohazard suit. Which is normal wear if you go to the supermarket anyway now, so it's best to carry one just in case. Right, so... <laughs> okay, you got to laugh, haven't you? Yeah, of course you have. Anyway, people, um, thanks for your comments on the, on the Ripping film, that was great. Um, fleet news. Um, yes, uh, cheap heap. Okay. Um, <laughs> old stinky. Okay. Um, ask, poor old Astra in the garage still. Okay, I haven't touched it yet. I need hoses and stuff. Uh, I've spent quite a bit on tyres and stuff without cheap heap. So, um, you know, that's going to have to wait for a bit. Uh, looking for a discovery. Been keeping my eye on the market. And I have to say, it's getting quite depressing, but it seems that prices are rising. <sighs> Even with the cheap crap, prices seem to be rising. I, I can't understand that, because there's plenty about. Or perhaps there isn't. So if you're looking for one as well, let me know, see how we're going on. But personally, I'm going to look for a V8, simply because it's low mileage. It's because the last one I had was worn out. Everything was gone. The bearings, the transmission, the whole job like was manual, worn out, tired, throw it away. So, less a mile, it should be good. Well, that's why I'm looking for a V8, because usually less a mile is, but you don't want a workhorse. Some people use them as workhorses, and that's in the flog to death. Um, so what we're looking for is a pampered pet. So, if you're looking for one as well, let me know, see how you are going on. But what I'm looking at at the moment, the prices seem to be going up. So, I'm just going to have to save for longer. Now, by the time I save that, it's going to go up a bit more. I'm going to have to save some more. So it's not looking good. There's plenty of cheap ones out there, pretty cheap TD5s, but they're all in the danger area of 160,000 where stuff starts going. <sighs> I've had one of them ones, I don't want that again. Um, I'm certainly not going to buy a 3008 Peugeot. <laughs> you can't take back seat belts out. And it looks... I've got a feeling it's trying to be a Range Rover. You know, with the... Centre console, it's quite Range Rover-ish, you yeah. know, you feel as though you're sat in a pit and the back split tailgate. Ah. Or is it just me? Might be just me. Anyway, good to see you all. Um, take care. None of this silly coronavirus business. Um, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Don't get lost or squashed, and I'll see you in a bit.